Brad Monastir is uh, the sports information director at Hillsdale College. He is the former sports editor at the Hillsdale Daily News and a longtime friend. Uh, Brad, uh, not much happening today, huh? No, not really. I got an inkling uh, about 10 o'clock last night. It was going to be a busy day today, and uh, it certainly turned out to be that, but busy for all the great reasons. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, Troy Weatherhead, uh, the record-breaking quarterback uh, over the past few years for Hillsdale College, and uh, Andre Holmes, the spectacular wide receiver, both a couple of uh, top-flight players in the GLIAC Conference. It appears that uh, they're heading to NFL training camps. Right. I've gotten confirmation from multiple uh, different sources, and I'll be having a release uh, coming out on our website later today that Troy Weatherhead's going to be signed as an undrafted free agent by the Cleveland Browns, and Andre Holmes is going to be going uh, to the Minnesota Vikings also as an undrafted free agent. All right. How does this work uh, with the new collective bargaining agreement? Uh, I was announcing or posting on Twitter earlier this morning that uh, that was a done deal, but actually they couldn't sign officially until this morning right that's correct it it's just a whole different ball game that the undrafted guys are playing this year because we lost the summertime of nfl activity due to the lockout with the lockout ending on monday teams were allowed to negotiate and agree to deals with undrafted players starting at six o'clock monday night which was last (laughs) night they couldn't officially sign those contracts until 10 o'clock this morning about 45 minutes ago but the agreement in principle, as they say, could be reached starting 6 o'clock Monday. So those agreements were in place last night for those two players. Let's talk about Andre Holmes, who uh, has just about every receiving record that there is at Hillsdale College. Uh, a tall kid. He's got some athletic ability. Signing on with the Minnesota Vikings. They have a new quarterback in Christian Ponder, you assume, has got a chance to start there. But that's a team very much in flux and in transition right now, um, kind of handicapping his opportunity there. How do you like that fit for Andre Holmes? Well, it's an interesting question because what I like about the opportunity both Troy and Andre have is that they're going to teams who have first-year head coaches. Mm -hmm. Leslie Frazier was hired halfway through last season in Minnesota to take over, but he's entering his first camp as head coach. So I think these guys are going to start on a little more of a level playing field compared to some of the veterans than if they were going to more deeply established programs, like if, let's say, they went with Andy Reid in Philadelphia, and he's been there for 12, 13 years. I think that does enhance their opportunities. Uh, I know the Vikings have talked about, you know, Sidney Rice is a free agent wide receiver there, maybe not re-signing him. They have a lot of receivers on their roster right now. But it's about who can kind of emerge and, and open people's eyes. And I think the success of so many undrafted free agents in recent years in the NFL, uh, Arian Foster in Houston, undrafted free agent, led the league in rushing last year. I think it's made coaches and decision makers at that level much more open-minded about what these players can bring to their teams. And they're willing to give these guys uh, more of a coherent look once they get into camp. Andre was, uh, you know, he participated in the NFL Combine right. and uh, went through all of that. Uh, they, they talk a lot about measurables and, uh, you know, 40 mm-hmm. time uh, vertical jump and all the rest of it. Uh, when you kind of handicap his chances, we know this is incredibly difficult. Last year, A.J. Keg going to the Cleveland right. Browns lasted a couple of days. Petro goes to the Jets, lasts yeah. a couple of days. Same thing for Drew Baraby at the Green Bay Packers. So we know how tough this is. You almost feel like Andre has a chance to stick a little bit longer because of some of those measurables. Well, the measurables that are in Andre's favor are his height, he's six foot four, and he runs a four four five forty. That's what he was timed in, in the NFL Combine. Those will take you a long way. And he's used to having all of the attention, all the coverage leaning his way. So he's learned how to work around coverage to get himself open and then do something with the football once he catches it. So he may not be receiving in terms of the bodies that num- that kind of attention when he's in camp. Certainly the guys he's going against are going to be much more highly skilled, bigger, stronger, faster, all that. But he's used to carrying a burden, which he carried here with our offense so to have that mindset already in place for him, I think, is an advantage for Andre. Smart kid, and I, he, he showed me something in the playoff game uh, up in Minnesota, St. Cloud, uh, about a 20-degree day. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Chargers got beat up a little bit in that game, but here was Andre Holmes taking punishment over the middle of the field on a cold day, had 16 catches over 200 yards in that right. ball game. He showed he could play in a hostile environment with everything on the line. Absolutely. Against a defense that was geared to stop him. 
uh, whether St. Cloud knew if Joe Glendening was healthy for that game or not. Right. Uh, they may or may not have known that, but they were certainly gearing all of their defensive attention to what Andre could do for our offense in spite of that. 16 catches, a single-game school record, just obliterating the, the old record. And, and to do it on a stage like that, to do it on the playoff stage, in spite of a loss, I, I mean, Andre had a brilliant game. And a brilliant career for Hillsdale College. You talk about a Troy Weatherhead. Uh, he His intangible rating is off the charts. Yeah. He is the definition of a leader, uh, of a character guy, of a smart kid at the quarterback position. He's an accurate passer. I don't know that he has... Uh, you know, the prototypical rifle arm for an NFL quarterback, but he can get it out there. He can put it on receivers in stride. In a situation in Cleveland where the quarterback position is very much up for grabs with Colt McCoy right. coming in uh, out of the draft, where do you see him kind of fitting in with Cleveland? Well, like with Andre, but maybe even more so for Troy, he's got a real opportunity to, to maybe stick with that team. they got a new head coach there, Pat Shermer, and they're just blowing everything up. They are starting completely over. They're starting. A, they're installing a new offense uh, for this season, and that will enable Troy to kind of start at the same start line mm-hmm. with everybody else when you start with the race. Um, his his accuracy and his cool in the pocket, I think, are going to be some of his biggest assets. He's not going to be overwhelmed by anything he's going to see in camp. He's the moment is not going to be bigger right. than him. And that is part of Troy's maturity that in my position that I have at the school, I've been able to know Troy and to see him mature and grow into the leader he was. Very gratifying for me, for my position, to see a guy like that came in as a freshman, you know, sort of was happy to be there, and then understood the responsibility of being a quarterback. Not just the plays you make on the field, but the leadership responsibilities you have to your teammates. As that 2009 season went along, Troy's junior year, he grew and accepted and embraced the leadership role, and then he just took it on in, in 2010. And he talked about his accuracy. You know, Troy gets the championship belt of accuracy. Mm-hmm. You know, he completed 77% of his passes. That doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen at any level. So to, to try to carry that over, the confidence that Troy has gained from the success he had here, along with those other things, that isn't intangible, as you mentioned, it's uh, it's a big check mark for him as he's going and competing for a job here. Yeah, the the awareness, uh, the pocket yeah. presence. He doesn't have blinding speed. He's not the most athletic guy no, in the world. Doesn't. And if he were here, he would uh, he would definitely cop to that. <laughs> but but he has the way. You saw it a million times when he'd get under pressure. He could feel that pressure. Yes. Work his way through the the pocket. Uh, find an opening where he could get the ball off. And and you know it'll be interesting to see how long he can stick there. Um, and, and maybe get an opportunity to, to hold on with the Cleveland Browns. I think a lot of this, you know, all of the Chargers who have been signed the last couple of years are kind of coming off the Jared Valdir success, too, of not just getting into the NFL but, right. but being incredibly successful, starting at left tackle for an NFL franchise and doing really well there. Left tackle is one of the premier positions in the NFL. It's yes. a huge, huge, big money position. And to have that kid from Hillsdale College go in there and do so well, I think that opens some doors or some minds to Hillsdale College around the league. It absolutely does. I would even maybe take it back the year before to Tom Cordy yeah. getting signed by the Pittsburgh Steelers. You talk about a guy as a linebacker with the defending Super Bowl champions, and that was their strongest position was linebacker, he was the last guy cut from the mm-hmm. team. And and I think we remember he intercepted Colt Brennan in a mm-hmm. in a preseason game against the Redskins that year. But but Cordy kind of cracked the door open. Jared kicked it down. And and with what Jared was able to do was just to remove all doubt about what the the preconceived notions are about you come from a small school playing in a small conference. Uh, I think Andy, we've seen the GLIAC long enough. Uh, there's some high quality football that's played in this league. And you look at the way Jared could dominate from his position, the way Andre Holmes dominated his position, the way Troy Weatherhead has done the same. It, it, it can be a domino effect in a positive way, and I think that's what we're seeing actually play out here. And all you want for these guys that you see achieve so much and work so hard is for them just to get a fair chance to, to win a job, to, to get – there's only 1,900 NFL players in the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a bigger issue, people talk about the salaries and this lockout thing. That's why when you have a $9 billion industry and you have 1,900 employees, that is the premier product you have in that business. 
those guys are going to make that kind of money. The math dictates it. Mm -hmm. But it's not about you know the money for guys like Jared and Troy mm -hmm. and Andre. It's about the chance to do what they love to do, that they're very good at doing, and to do it at the highest level. And having known those guys, that's what drives them, and that's what they look forward to. They're not looking forward to the paycheck as much as the pride that they get from not only representing our school but representing themselves at that kind of level. I mean, you make a great point about Jared Veldier. I mean, that guy's drafted in the third round. He's making yeah. really good money living in the Bay Area, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world. He spent a lot of his offseason – in Hillsdale and at his home in Michigan, instead of uh, hanging out uh, in the Bay Area, he came back here. He opened a gym. He's been incredibly right. involved in the the Hillsdale community, uh, you know, giving back to the institution and also in his local community. Just character guys that are coming through this program and really, really representing Hillsdale College in a real class way. Uh, w what's next for these guys? What are they going to go f go through? Uh, talking now about uh, uh, Troy and Andre, what will they go through in the next few days as camp opens up? Well, it's interesting. They're going to be kind of in this realm of the unknown along with their coaches and teammates because this is a training camp uh, scenario we're looking at unlike any that we've seen. If this was a normal summer, Troy and Andre would have been signed the, the Sunday or the Monday right. after the draft. They would have then gone to rookie camp, which takes place in the early part of May, Maybe they get through there, maybe they don't. In Tom Cordy's case, he did make the cut and then got to training camp in July with the Steelers. They're all kind of thrown into the same sandbox right now. So it's kind of like, all right, everyone's in here together. Let's see who can rise to the top. So in a way, it, it was uh, not beneficial for Troy and Andre with the lockout happening the way it did. Maybe now it's almost swung the other way where they get a little bit more of a chance to compete against maybe guys that are already on those rosters. And... They're showing their wares not against fellow undrafted rookie free agents, but maybe against players that are coming back to their teams. They can say, wow, Andre's going and making plays that our guys who were on our team last year couldn't make. It may swing in a positive fashion for Troy and Andre with this lockout and the timing going the way it did. So they're both training camps for both teams open Saturday, July 29th. What's kind of ironic and kind of uh, it, fun for me is Andre's going back to Minnesota State Mankato. That's where the Vikings hold their <laughs> training camp. And we had a good day there. Yes, we did. A couple of years ago, we went and beat uh, Mankato on their field in a playoff game. So for Andre, he's going to be returning to the actual playing surface, the field, where he had one of the great victories we've had in our school history. So they're just going to get thrown into that mix. And I think, I, I'm not sure of the exact, like when the rosters have to be cut. That's kind of a new timeline and a new calendar that the NFL is following. I think it kind of goes through August 8th or 9th by the time they have to cut down. But that cut down process will proceed, and, and hopefully they can just keep uh, making those cuts. So the, the, now the Cleveland Browns host the Detroit Lions on August 19th in the, the second preseason game. So those games are always shown live to fans here in Michigan at whatever local affiliate carries those games. So if Troy can kind of get through with the Browns until that point, we could get to uh, see him play on TV. Brad Monastier runs the sports information department at Hillsdale College. He's the former sports editor for the Hillsdale Daily News. He has a uh, really wonderful website that's going to have continued information about all of these guys. Hillsdale.edu. You can click athletics and see all of Brad's stuff on there. Thanks for coming in uh, at the last second to talk about these guys. Real exciting because we know what quality guys these people are. Oh, absolutely. I I'm happy for them, and the entire college is proud of not just this opportunity they're getting, but the way they've represented us on the field. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about for us is the character and the leadership that, that they show. they got a whole community of fans here, and we're all pulling for them.